Hello, hello everybody. It's Kat in her shoebox kitchen as I have been told by a disgruntled listener who wanted to insult me. And yes, it is. It is indeed a shoebox kitchen. And this is a vase right here that was given to me by my friend Corrine. This was given to me as a wedding gift. This I found in a design store and I loved it because it is like a gazing ball. I might bring that down so I can gaze at it. But in the meantime, it's up there. And that's a birdhouse and that's a birdhouse that I had in my shop when I had a store and sold retail products. Um, So welcome to Cat's Chats. This is a very casual thing. It's not going to be a storyline about my narcissistic abuse and all of that. That's a completely different playlist. This is just, hey, what's up? How are you doing as a human? How are you doing, human? That's all. This is all this is. It's a checkup. So pull up a cup of cup of, let's talk about whatever is coming up for anybody. So because this is not a live, uh, I can't see uh, anybody's suggestions for conversations or jokes or snarky remarks about my kitchen. I happen to love my kitchen. In fact, my, my space is in a valuable area and it's worth money. But if you'd rather have a big kitchen in the country, you know what? I would too. But your, your, your remark is mean. Because what happens if I could only afford to live in a single wide or a double wide or whatever? Now that would be a shoebox of a living space. So there are mean people, I guess, in the world or people who like to um, snark off, if you know what I mean. Well, you can go snark yourself. <laughs> mm. So I am in my next place, actually, my next chapter of my life. I uh, have made many videos on coming to terms with being a child of a narcissist, but also just recovering from having them as partners, marriage partners. And I'm a long-term monogamous, and I am loyal, and it takes the a lot for them to be really bad for me to not want to be with them anymore. You know, really coming to terms that they were never going to be anything other than what they were. And that they pretended they were one thing and then they changed. So I'm, I'm like, I got, I have got to be authentic. Maybe it's me. And then, yes, it, it turns out it was. But not in a bad way. Other listeners have commented how I must be the problem. Well, I am, but to myself. I don't cause problems to these men. I don't take them for all they're worth. In fact, I sign over everything to them, and I'm very generous. So financially... Uh, there's a reason why I live in the shoebox kitchen and I'm not asking for your empathy, your sympathy. I'm not asking for that. I'm proud. I have an adventure ahead of me and I can do it because of, of my sense of life, of, of being. It's such that I look at this as an adventure. I am honorable. I didn't add to the problem and the misery of the male gene pool. 
I left men with the money. I left them with the, uh, the holdings and signed paperwork. So <clears throat> I have my own, okay? And I'm, I am healing myself and I've come a long way and it feels great. So welcome to my kitchen. Pull up a chair, grab a cup of cuppa, and we're gonna do some more chatting. You know, I talk about how you can now, with the knowledge that you are a child of a, of a narcissist and or uh, you had relationships that were narcissistic and you didn't know what they were. You know, people can be taken for a 30 year ride, maybe even longer being married to a narcissist and not know that's what it is because they're not their parent was. And so they too uh, became the victim. It's a very, very real, you're a victim. You're, you're with a person who has a confrontational personality type. They have to be right. A conversation with them entails them dictating to you. Anything you have to say is met with aggression as if it's an attack to them. You can't live with these people because their emotions are what dictates the mood of the house and you're just always trying to fawn on them to get them <clears throat> to stop being such jerks. And that was what I was going with, which was the fawning is the reason why, yes, it's my fault. That's what I did as a child. But that's why I attracted these guys in the first place. I'm not whole enough. Nobody else, a whole woman, wouldn't have allowed their behavior from the very beginning of the relationship. I made the mistake from the very beginning. I know that now, okay? <laughs> so please don't shoot the messenger and the person who's in the storyline, all right? I'm the protagonist in this story, all right? I'm not the antagonist. I'm not your ex-wife who took you for everything. I'm not that woman who did these men wrong who, or who, who deserved it. Okay, let's get that straight. So be on my side or get the snark away. Go snark yourself. <laughs> mm. So I'm compiling a video that's in the editing place on iMovie, which I enjoy. And the reason why is it's sewing up the idea of Mount Everest. And I find concurrently the, I, the, the story of climbing Mount Everest, how a person has to train, first of all, but then what actually needs to happen to get acclimatization. Well, interestingly, that's exactly what it's like when you become married to a narcissist. They present ever increasing difficulties for you that are obstacles to your path. And your path and your goal is you want a peak relationship. You want to be in the best relationship possible because that's your goal and you're a team player. So you give it everything. Okay. But when you find that if you get to the top with a narcissist, it means you're going to not be able to get back down again. They are the ones winning. And it's not like I'm trying to win over them. It's just that you're not a teammate with them. They are against you. So that's what you spend your life with. Somebody that's always adversarial towards you. That's not my cup of tea, bitches. Ooh. I'm going to spill some tea on my parents. What's going on in my parents' world? Whoa. All right. Well, this is how it goes. 
My parents are both aging and my father had to leave the family home, which was his marital home with her, um, meaning that's my birth mother. I've only had one-sided parents. They are married, ha unhappily, 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 but married and happy about that fact, okay? So there, uh, I would not want that. It's just awful. I, I, I see that there are relationships. I've witnessed that where people are actually loving towards one another and supportive of each other. And if I can't have that relationship, I don't want one. So that's why a lot of us women are single. We're single because we would rather be alone than abused. <laughs> Men have to learn how to treat women. We're not porn stars. We're not objects for your erection. Time for a glass of wine. Oh, I need to find a wine glass. Oh, they're drying in my dryer and right now. It's going to be really hot. So forget that. Oh, well, I'll use this. I'll use this. So um, my Mount Ever story means that also, you, it's a great little metaphor for once you realize that you are the child of a narcissistic parent, that's your Mount Everest for the ch children. Because you all didn't even go up to Mount Everest. You, you were like headed for the hills if you got out of a relationship with a narcissist. But if you're dead because that meant you went up to the top, you see what I mean? Basically, I climbed Mount Everest because I kept wanting to find out why I kept picking these relationships. I did the heavy lifting. I did the training. I did the going through all the, the, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual challenges to find out why do I keep picking these guys rather than being shamed and the taking the blame by men who are mean or women who want to shame, but usually it's the men. And shame on you men. Be a better example. You don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. And your action, I don't take it as mean to me. It, it doesn't hurt my feelings. It, it demonstrates to me what other women are having to deal with. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> the rift between the sexes is getting bad. If, you th if you're if you that cruel to a woman, me, who's working very, very diligently to have self-improvement and self-awareness in order to have a healthy relationship with a man that's healthy and is willing to actually take responsibility for it and you want to blame her for her being mistreated? It's like telling the kitten it's its fault for walking out in the middle of the road after the fact. <laughs> oh my God. And if it was a kitten, it'd be a puffball, a smashed puffball. Ugh. Oh. We can't have kitten memories like that. So I'm in my kitchen. Welcome to my shoebox kitchen. <laughs> it's an expensive shoebox. I live in a very, very hip part of town. So there, um, meanies. I'm peeling the price tag off so you all don't see how much I spent on this wine. I find it tacky. But if you must know, it was $16.99 and it was at a local bottle shop. But when I have guests come over, I don't like them to see the price tag on my wine. I might have to ask them to put it on the bottom. But you know why they don't do that? They put it on the actual wine bottle itself 
so that you don't pick out every single wine from the case and look underneath and possibly spill one because we know some people drink and go to a bottle shop and they're already toasted by the time they get there. Present company may have done that. In fact, last night I had gone for margaritas and I will post that as my picture um, for this uh, little talk. That, that'll be, that'll be my uh, thumbnail. It's me sitting outside at a Mexican restaurant owned by a real Spanish Mexican guy. And um, yeah, English is his second language. He's a real Mexican. He's really from Mexico, okay? He's proud of it. It's not a Spanish person who's insulted or somebody from Venezuela or uh, Honduras or South America or, uh, you know, no, no, nobody like that. It's a true Mexican. I'll have to ask next time where he is from. But having just been there that one time, I um, didn't think to ask him because he kept asking us how we were. And we had changed tables and he didn't even know that it was us again. <laughs> I wasn't going to start asking him questions in case he didn't really speak English because he looked confused. <laughs> so we laughed and said, good, good. Thank you very much. Bueno, bueno. So I'm sitting amongst all these plants and it was my first outing out and I saw Tornadoes the movie, which is good, dumb fun. And it's really, really for feminists, really. Um, but or for girls who need encouragement. And Helen Hunt just gives the better performance because Helen Hunt is truthfully enthralled. You can tell it. Whereas the other girl always looks a little worried going to the storm. Just me. So, would I buy this wine again? Heck no. Not unless I have, oh, this would taste good. It's a Barbera de Asti. It's actually sophisticated. I need to be drinking it out of a better glass. But as we're in the dark. Look at me, look at me. Well, anyway, let's try that again. Oh, okay. So then now you're looking at the wine. As an auto adjust, I love it. So then, somebody told me that if it's your wine, not a, not you're not like with other people, you can blow on your own wine. And the best way to get the oxygen out is to go, <sighs> and then you take it off. Oop, that didn't have it. Okay, let me try again. We'll try, we'll try. Because if it makes that little poof sound, that would mean it was under pressure when you open it, which would mean, it, mean it's more of a vacuum state, which would mean you got the oxygen out of it, class. Class, could you live in a vacuum? Could the, phys could the physical body live in a vacuum? No, it would suck. <laughs> so the ongoing story, my dad got hoovered back into going up, back up to um, live in Apex after he had made an escape and stayed for a month or so with my brother trying a couple of times to go and stay with his wife, my mother, and having to leave both times. And yes, he's my real dad. She's my real mother. Mm. 
We had a really good upbringing, but for the fact we had a pathological narcissist as a mother. And that's my Mount Everest. I'm storytelling, like to loop it around again. So I found that out and now the descent is happening and I'm getting back down to my base camp and I have to go through every camp. Now, first you have to get through the death zone, which is staying in the grief. You have the grief, but you have to keep going. So you get out of the freeze mode. Now, what I discovered in one of my camps, and I'm not sure whether or not it was base camp at the tea house, I figured it, you know, it could be the, at the tea house, because I'm gonna stay at base camp for a while, nourish myself, so I'm gonna become a base camp junkie is what I'm gonna become, watching people come and go. <laughs> Meaning, I'm imagining it as, as, as what would be happening in my psyche um, and so what I'm experiencing right now is the witnessing of myself as fawning and having this fawning mode be part of my actual modus operandi in my brain. And it's in the way of my ability to accomplish personal, uh, desires because of the wiring. So learning how to rewire the brain so that I can accomplish what it is that I actually have in mind. When somebody goes, oh, what is it you desire? I'm like, I, I see it though. I mean, it could be something as simple as complete my website again. Like just do, re, do, it, get, do a redo. And it means sitting down and focusing and concentrating but I'm not right now because I'm going through this massive healing process. And it's, I'm writing down instead what I'm going through and my YouTube channel is a way for me to, in real time, this is July of 2024, but this is a timeless experience for anybody who is going through the same thing, which is you're coming to terms with your, with your entire childhood and you can do what Carlos Castaneda talked about as recapitulation as you go back into your life and you go, oh, it wasn't me, it was that parent. I wasn't the bad person, it was that parent that punished me for saying I love you. I am lovable. I just keep picking the wrong people or I have. And so learning how to not fawn means recognizing when you're being mistreated right away. So that's the other thing I did. I was able to go into all my relationships and a red flag was always waving in my face every single time. And I continued the relationship because somehow it, I was trauma bonded and then as I became more dependent on them, they could be more abusive towards me. It's always when I'm you're dependent. So you never want to be dependent on a narcissist. However, they still don't make life fun. And they're still going to think of you as not a teammate, but as somebody they have to have around for their own, uh, sort of like a, you're a chore. You're treated like you're a chore. Like it's hard for them to have to give you attention because your job is to give your attention to them. That's the other thing about being with a narcissist. And you know, if you're gonna, if you wanna act like a CEO, pay the bitch, okay? <laughs> that must be why so many women divorce uh, with such vengeance, but not me. No, I just wanna get it done with. No confrontation, just like, let's just do it. All right, whatever you want me to sign, just be happy, go away. So I'll see how it works for me in the long run. <laughs> well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I have uh, looked at other ways of looking at it. There is perspective and perception. Perception shapes a person's ability to see reality. 
or multiple realities. And that's the other thing. We have different ways of looking at things for sure. And therefore I get how a person could look at me and see me in a different light. I can see me in a different light. I can play that game too. I can look at it like a chessboard. Absolutely. But then I can actually go back with my own experience and go, wow, huh, where did that stem from? And it goes all the way back to poor decision making and why I married my husband in the first place. And my daughter saved my life. Because think about it. I would have been out in Tucson with my parents. <laughs> Instead I, instead, I moved back to the East Coast with my then husband to raise a family. And we were all happy, but he wasn't. And without going, making it into a long story, going full circle, um, I'm in a really good place of, of healing and, and readying myself to be able to be healthy enough to be in relationship. And I'm paving the way, or I am like like a GoPro, the, the person that has a GoPro and they're gonna show you Mount Everest up and down again. I, I'm, I'm GoProing it. I'm showing, I'm showing, wow, you really have to figure out what was your response. So I will link videos that I have found helpful. But in the meantime, go to my playlist and go to self-care and healing post-narcissistic abuse and look through the videos in my playlist. I've already, I've been doing this for a really long time. Um, you can see from my, my channel. I mean, look at my channel, poke around. I also have a playlist on when I was seriously practicing planetary tantra. Now we just had a full moon and that means you're in the middle of the cycle. Planetary Tantra follows the lunar cycle. And it carries it into a more complicated and fully nuanced uh, experience of being part of Mother's creation, which is the Earth. So it's pretty wild. It's a wild ride. Um, I am not doing it now so much with a system other than sensing myself. So lots of thinking and lots of rumination and a lot of, oh gosh, it just feels more relaxed. It's more relaxed. than when I first found out. I, I grieved, I, I, it's been two years. It'll be two years this August, uh, 2024, that I came full realization of how and what happened. My childhood got derailed, who this woman is called my mother, and then the subsequent relationships and the difficulties and hardships I had had, then came the understanding of all the things that I needed to reparent myself, which is one of Eric Erickson's things. Uh, and so Art of Communication is one of them. And so and I'm compiling a workbook for people just like me. If you're listening to this, if you're listening to this far, I will eventually have that available. I don't know what form it's gonna be in, but it, right now in real time, I'm going through this, I'm experiencing it. And that's what I want. I want to, to know what was my b base camp. And that, there then I, for I can, to me, this is philosophical thing, you know, learn more about the Sherpa learn to carry my own load, my own load, my own responsibility. So this guy that these people who insult me, um, I'm a good storyteller and a good time. Don't be so mean. 
jump on board, have a good time, listen. Listen, and it, it's, it's, it's real stuff. It's not made up stuff, it's real stuff, uh, this life of ours, and it's exciting. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a aware of what's happening politically. I'm aware of what's happened. You know, I'll, I'm aware. I I don't care because I don't. This is not what my channel is all about. I'm all about um, this piecing together the spiritual kintsugi of the soul. Uh, in shamanic healing, they call it a soul re soul retrieval. Soul retrieval. So other places call it inner child healing. I don't really like that. I don't like their approach, but it says it really that you're. That's why there's the adult child, adult children of narcissists, the Acon, Acon, um, C O N. I like to say, yeah, your childhood was a con. Let children be children, for goodness sake. We're going to work for the rest of our lives. Let children be children, narcs. These parents. Oh. Let children be ch children. My goodness. Now that we know what the narcissists are actually like, they've been identified. I have a playlist called the Narc Male. I have a playlist called which could also apply to women. I have a playlist called Raised by a Narcissistic Mother. I know all the signs now. I know every last one. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm going to uh, sign off now. This has been over half an hour. Lots of love to everybody uh, in your process. Own it. Um, be with yourself. You don't have anything to prove to anybody. No more fawning. No more fawning. No matter what. No more fawning.